All right, welcome back to the Coach Mack Show after a week off of the playoff edition, Coach. Before we jump into the playoffs, and obviously last or two weeks ago, rather, with uh, Lanier County, the, uh, we have some smaller guys, some future Indians in the playoffs right now, in district playoffs. Um, the little Indians, called the, uh, I believe they call them the Red Indians, and they defeated McIntosh County 25 to nothing Saturday afternoon. And then um, a young man you're familiar with, Coach Snapper, his group defeated Jeff Davis County in round one of the playoffs, 30, 32 to nothing. Uh, Snapper Hobbs, you know, he was a great, great football player. He might be one of the first kids I think I ever met when I got here back in the uh, uh, late 80s, you know, and he was a real little guy, and he's kind of always been around our program, been a manager forever, a football player and all that, and now, you know, he's – He's a, he's a he's a great father, you know. He does yeah. a great job, and his son plays for us, Mookie. And uh, Snapper has some uh, younger boys also, and I know they're involved in the uh, the rec program yes. uh, with football and and, and football and, and baseball. And I know Snapper coaches all that stuff. Oh yeah, and he's he's, uh, he's doing a great job. And I tell you what, we we really appreciate guys like Snapper and all the other rec league uh -huh. coaches who spend their time working with these kids, and I know they all do a, a positive job with them. You know, the thing that you can do to a real young kid like that is you can run them off or you can uh, really uh, put a sour taste in their mouth when it comes right. to a, a particular sport if you don't coach it the right way. And Snapper does a great job where these kids are enjoying it, they're having fun, and they, they, they're really the kind of kids that are going to come on up through together. Mm -hmm. And one day we'll be benefiting from the, the work that's, and the time that Snapper puts in. So we really appreciate the job that he, he does and all the other uh, rec coaches out there. No doubt about it. Snapper has uh, one young man, one of his sons, I believe it's Keyshawn. The other night, one game I actually got to take in a few weeks back. Seminoles, I believe they were playing Hilliard. This young man now with rec football. Johnson might have some competition coming up. He was three for four, excuse me, three for four on extra points, kicking. Wow, that's fantastic. I, you know, and whenever you're able to teach things such as punting, kicking, long snapping at that level, yeah. that's really huge because those kids will probably keep on, keep on doing that all throughout their high school and, and junior high next. So junior high football will be next, and hopefully mm -hmm. we're able to have kids that are doing a great job punting and kicking the football, and when they get to high school, then then we're set in, in those positions. Oh, yeah. A luxury. Starting to, maybe it'd be, become a luxury around here a little yeah, bit exactly. with the special teams. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, let's dive into Lanier County. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Coach, we defeated Lanier 27, 27 to nothing. Went on to end of the regular season, 9-1. Well, talking to our kids about our record at the end of the season, 9-1 and one is, is really a good record. I know yeah. that everybody around here, judges everything almost on a perfect record you know you got to be perfect which we're hardly ever perfect mm -hmm. and winning nine games in 10 attempts is a really good season it's really good you look at last year we were state runner up nine points for being state champions a year ago and we only won nine games through all that and, yeah. and uh, for us to be nine and one going to the playoffs i'm excited about that and i'm, I'm happy for our team uh that we've been able to be, you know, win nine games. And if you asked me at the beginning of the year, would you be able to win nine games in ten tries, I would have said absolutely not. And if you told me where you are, I'd say I'd take it because I knew that we'd have to probably upset a couple people, which I think we did, in order to get to that point. So I'm really excited that our team is 9-1. Uh, we're going to the playoffs in that position, one game away from that kind of that magical number of winning ten games in, in oh, yeah. a season. And hopefully we can win that tenth game, and then maybe then shoot for eleventh, and so forth down the road. But but last Friday, uh, week ago Friday against right. Lanier County, I, I thought we we played a little flat, maybe really? we, weren't, we weren't as sharp as we should have been. And I think you need to give a lot of credit, first of all, to Lanier County. Coach mm -hmm. Philip Johnson had those kids ready to go at Lanier. Uh, Lanier, it was senior night. They had a lot of good senior football players mm -hmm. over there. And I knew they were going to be excited to play us. Number one, you get a chance to play Charlton at home. And then number two, it's our last football game. Yeah. There is no playoffs for us. That's theirs. And it's, it's, this, is their own, this is their last football game. Right. And you look at Lanier County, they've been in every football game they've played this year mm -hmm. for quite a long time. So I thought that it would be a good hard foot football game over there. And, and it was. The first half was, was tough and, and, and we, you know, a lot of give and take, punting going on and yeah. things like that. And uh, 
uh, you know, I, I'm not disappointed, we, you know, in the game. I mean, I'm glad we got the win. I'm glad we got the shutout. And the young kids had to step up at the end and, and get a shutout. And a lot of younger kids also got some good time, uh, playing time in against their varsity, which I think was good because we saw some pretty good things. A.C. James had, I think, four tackles towards the end of the game. I mean, he was all over the place. So he's somebody that's been getting better and, and I think that has a chance to be a start, a varsity starter next year. And we we're able to get a lot of kids in that way. Um, so, you know, I'm pleased with the win. I, I thought maybe we were just a little bit flat. You look at uh, us coming off of uh, the week before that was Clinch County, right? right. Clinch County. Right. And that extremely, extremely Big emotional, rivalry. emotional win. And to get your kids refocused, it really took all week long to get them refocused and get them ready for, for, for uh, Lanier County. But I thought they, that we did by the end of the week. And, and, you know, we went out and we didn't make a whole bunch of mistakes. And I was really pleased with, uh, really pleased with Eric Daniels, <coughs> him running the football. Yeah. Eric, uh, we put him in there early and arrived right for halftime. I think the whole second half we started him. And he did a fabulous job running the football. Yeah, nice really play. pleased with uh, the job he did. And, and of course, uh, uh, Scott Birchall. Scott Birchall had some key key catches, yeah. a touchdown catch. And, and, big and, one there at the end, or toward the end. Yeah, big one towards the end. Really good throw by uh, uh, Jimmy Nettles. And so it, really good to get out of there. Uh, and, again, unfortunately, it seems like we're a little bit snake bit this year. When it comes to injuries, we did have another player hurt, Omar Lewis, our defensive tackle, sprained his ankle early in the game. And uh, it was a good thing we did have last week off. Yeah. And Omar, was we were able to rest him the whole week. And I think we're about to get him where he needs to be. But again, we have some key guys that are still out, key guys that we don't know if uh, they'll be ready for this Friday. I know uh, the defense, you, know, you talked about it just a minute ago, that's their fourth shutout of the season. You know, kind of quietly, we have had a really good year on defense. Yeah. Really have, uh, you know, we've had the shutouts. At times, we give up some yards. We give up some big plays. So you don't feel like that we're playing great on defense. But statistically, you look at it, we're playing really pretty good. Yeah. And also, you look at the scoreboards, yeah, four shutouts in a, in a season. You know, we almost shut out half your opponents. That's that's pretty good. That's, Especially uh, in this region. Yeah, Coach Norris Woods, David Pender, they're doing a great job uh, with the defensive guys. And, and we've been able to to really get people playing one way. And that's mm -hmm. been a big key for us is, is really work kids all year long to try to get them to where we have a lot of depth or we're able to really not have to play a kid the entire game, 48 minutes, mm -hmm. on both sides of the football. And we've been able to do a lot of that this year in the last couple of years, and I think it makes our defense better because on defense you do exert a lot of energy. You're always sprinting to the ball, chasing the ball, all 11 of you are. So if you can get most of those guys to where they can rest whenever the offense is out there, mm -hmm. you have a good chance to, to, to be fresh and to, to keep running to the football and, and that sort of thing. So, again, yeah, defensively, pretty nice year. Offensively, uh, kind of up and down, up mm -hmm. and down a little bit. We've We've – thrown for over 1,200 yards. We've run for nearly 2,000 yards. So yardage-wise and point-wise, we haven't done too bad there either. But the, uh, on the defense, back on the defensive side of the ball, you had a couple of turnovers early that they created. Um, Brandon, Brandon, I almost said Benjamin. Brandon Dale had a uh, nice pick. Had a good pick. Uh, you know, Brandon's a guy that we played all over the field. Uh, you'll yeah. see him up at... Outside linebacker, you'll see him sometimes out at corner. And usually when he's out at corner, we've made a mistake in our coverage, and he ends up out there. But, but he plays a lot of free safety for us and has done a really good job being that guy that we're able to play in a lot of different places. And he's all over the place on special teams. He's done a great job there. Our defensive line, of course, uh, losing, um, you know, losing Toby Dasher yeah. early in the year, that was just huge. And, and if you told me that we were going to have this kind of year defensively, Without Toby, Without I would have really not believed you because I really we've really built everything this whole defense around Toby. But that tells you the kind of job that Mookie Smith's been doing. Yeah. The replacement knows uh, this Thursday uh, Toby's going to have his knee surgery finally, and uh, so we are, your thoughts with him and as he has his ACL surgery and I think it'll be uh, I think everything will be fine with that. And I know he's kind of eager to get it done with, start rehabbing and start moving towards next year which uh, is senior year so i uh, you know keep him in your thoughts and prayers uh, going through that this thursday with it with his knee surgery but 
again, it's been a it's been a solid year, solid year on both sides of the ball. Special teams had some really good things. Tevis Dasher, you know, we lost an all-state punter in Trey Harrington. Yeah. And when you lose an all-state punter, you're expecting a big drop off, especially when you don't big even know shoes. who your especially when you don't even know who your punter is going to be the following year. You're expecting a big drop off. But Tevis yeah. stepped up and worked hard at it. And we haven't had that big of a drop off. I think Tevis is averaging around 36, 37 yards mm-hmm. a punt, which is really about about uh, two yards shorter than uh, than Harrington was a year ago. So, really? so really, we haven't lost a whole bunch right there. So we're we're pleased with that. And of course, uh, you know, well, Thomas Tomcat Tom Johnson, Cat. Uh, Tomcat has done a great job with his kicking field goals and kicking extra points and, and that sort of thing. So we've been, been pleased with that. like to do better in the return game. But, again, uh, to this point, the year's been, a, I think, a success. Yeah. And now it's the, the second season, playoff season. Hopefully we can get some momentum and get some things going there. Were you surprised on, on special teams the other night that um, Lanier, the onside kick that Tomcat did, mm-hmm. They, they, they almost felt like they didn't play it, and Kurt went down and covered it up. Yeah, they, it was, it's a live ball once it goes 10 yards, and you're right, Kurt made a great play on We've been working on that. Mm-hmm. We've been working on trying to get some speed in front of the ball and getting down and covering it. And we're doing a lot of different things kicking the ball. We have worked on, and it's not really that I'm giving anything away because I know Lincoln County looks at our film, oh, yeah. but uh, we've been working hard on different types of kickoffs. We, we will onside kick, as you've seen. We will pooch kick it, right. try to recover both of them, and then when we see it's available, we will kick it deep or we'll directional kick it to one side or the other. And a lot, a lot of credit goes to, again, uh, Thomas uh, Johnson on that, our kicker, uh, being able to do that. He works hard. You know, He's just a kicker. Yeah. But he is a kicker. I mean, we're lucky to have him, but he has a lot of time and practice to work on all his different kicks. So right now we've looked at it statistically. We're giving up just about to midfield right. on deep kicks. We kick the ball deep, chances are it's going to come back to midfield with a chance to work to go the distance. Right. When we onside kick or we pooch kick, you're in control. We have, yeah, we're in complete control of that usually, and we have a chance to get it back. Plus we got a chance to keep them from scoring. Plus, uh, you know, for giving up half the field anyway, let's give it up under our, con- our uh, under the way we want to, and not right. the way the way they want to. But again, we still have worked hard on deep kicks, and Thomas's legs getting stronger, and I, uh, he's getting that thing close to the end zone. And it's still something we may do is still kick it deep down to the end zone. Was that something that um, you talked about? Kicking it deep on side or pooch kicking is that a read or is that set up before? No, it is. A, it's it's a read and it's a call. We'll, we'll do both. Uh, we'll call something and they understand if they see a certain things that automatically this is what we're doing. Okay. And and it's really not that big a deal because our our ten guys we have lined up is chasing the ball anyway. Irregardless of where it goes, we're chasing it as fast as we can. Um, but usually, I think. We're usually all on the same page. We know where the ball is going. We're able to converge on the ball and get to it pretty quick. And, again, we're able to do different things. We, we do have something called in the huddle, and then we're able to break the huddle, okay. and we're able to change it. So it is, uh, it's a pretty good situation we have right now with our ability to, to kick the ball different places on kickoffs. But if you don't want to mind, I'm going to allow myself a personal moment. I was pretty proud of my boy the other night. Got his first varsity pass. To uh, Scott Birchall of all people. Yeah, yeah. You I, know, I was proud. <laughs> you know, a- AJ's got a really strong arm, and AJ's gotten to the point to where we we wondered early in the year if something was to happen to Jimmy. You know, would we put Tevis being a quarterback? Who Tevis has played quarterback before? But now, you know, AJ has gotten to the point to where now, you know, without a doubt, if something was to happen to Jimmy, it'd be it'd be uh, AJ's job to continue with it. And so he's really done a great job getting better. Um, I think AJ's arm arm strength is, is stronger than Jimmy's, and uh, actually some of his throws he makes some throws as good as anybody we've ever had. Really, and he you know you. You, you know him pretty well, me and your son and all, and, right, and I'm, always, uh, I'm, always, I'm always trying to encourage him to, uh, to try to get his body a little bigger. Yeah, well, we're, and, we're uh, on that. We're on he's that. already six foot two at least. He's got great, great arm strength. He's getting more and more comfortable in the quarterback position. Uh, the thing with him is, is we've got to get him a, a little bit bigger, yeah. and, and we're going to work hard with him on getting him more, uh, a little bit better with his feet. 
to, to avoid the rush and to make plays with his feet and so forth. But he's got as good an arm as we've had probably since uh, Dwight Dasher, who I thought had a big time arm. And, and of course, I, you know, I'm always I'm always telling you know Jimmy and AJ spend a lot of time in practice with Coach uh, Zach Wittenberg. Yeah. And, and Zach does an incredible job he with does. both of them. He's uh, he's drilling them every day. And the thing I keep telling AJ when I tell AJ this, I make sure I tell him in front of Jimmy. You know, AJ, next year I want you to show up with the intent that you're going to beat Jimmy out. Yeah. And well, that way, them both of them. but in that way, I know that we're going to have two good quarterbacks next yep. year. And and uh, if if one gets lax, uh, then we'll just go with the other one for a while and that <laughs> sort of thing. So, but anyway, we're really he's falling in line, doing the things he needs to do, and we're real proud of both of our quarterbacks. Have done a great oh, job no this year. You know, Jimmy was an unknown, really unknown going into the year. He, he started two years on B-team. Right. He took all of his big hits on B-team and, and, he did. and, and really fought through that. And, um, and then when it was his turn this year as a junior, uh, you know, if you'd again told me that, hey, Jimmy's going to throw for uh, over 1,200 yards yeah. in 10 games, good year. Uh, I wouldn't have thought that would have been the case. But he has, and he's come up with some big runs also. So, Again, uh, we've been real fortunate that some guys have really stepped up and have done a good job for us. Jimmy, Jimmy's a big part of that too. Oh yeah, and Jimmy's durable. He is durable. He's he a tough take, guy. Take he's a, he's a, give a, one. You know, Jimmy. I'm not even sure what Jimmy's voice sounds like because he never has anything to say, and uh, you never <laughs> sense any pain or discomfort from Jimmy. Yeah. It, it, he's a tough guy. Yeah. He's, a, he's a tough guy. He's a he's he's one of those throwback quarterbacks where you're not afraid to run him. You know, we we have particular plays. We have uh, two or three plays where Jimmy is designed just for him to run the football. Yeah. And uh, I have no problem calling those plays because I know Jimmy's as tough as any running back we yeah. got, and he'll take the hit he and he'll will. give the hit. And uh, I'm really happy with the job he's done. I have I haven't seen him dive yet. Every time no, he no, he's on linebacker, I, it's... I, I, I've seen him stumble, but I haven't seen him avoid. <laughs> I haven't seen him take the dive. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Coach, when we come back, we're going to go over our senior spotlights. Number 63, Hodges, Ethan Hunter, and number 66, Trent Mahoney. And we'll be back after this message. The Folkestone Pharmacy, your original hometown pharmacy for over 45 years, is a proud sponsor of Charlton Sportsnet broadcasts. Folkestone Pharmacy accepts insurance from most local employers, including the City of Folkestone, Charlton County, Babcock and Wilcox, AJM, Charlton Memorial Hospital, and many others. The Folkestone Pharmacy wishes the Indians best of luck this season. All right, welcome back to the Coach Mack Show. There's our senior spotlight. We're doing two because we were idle last week on the show, waiting on the uh, playoff rankings to come out. Um, coach number 63, Hodges, Ethan Hunter. You know, uh, you know, Haji is a, he's, he's a guy, his, his, his uh, I guess it would be his stepbrother, Lance Thompson, had played for us the last four years. And, and Ethan, he played for his first couple years, then didn't play last year, didn't know if that's what he wanted to do, but then he realized that one year off how bad he missed it and being a part of everything and sitting out here in the parking lot waiting for Lance to get done with practice. So uh, and he'd been in the weight room the whole time, and I kept telling him, I said, you have to wait till practice is over anyway to ride home with your brother. You might as well be playing. So this year, he's uh, after his brother graduates, he decides he wants to play his senior year, and we're glad he has. He's a great, great kid. You know, his mother, Tina Thompson, his dad, uh, Jim Hunter. Um, Haji is a, he's a, he's a, he's a kid that's... Uh, He's got a great personality and everything. Yeah. I've I've known him since he's been here as a freshman, and, and I, I can always remember he's always been in my weight class. And and when I take roll all the time, it confused it confused me so much because this was his name, Hodges Ethan Hunter. I said <laughs> I, I said it sounds like they put your uh, your last name first and your your first name last, and then they got that Ethan in there, and and then finally uh, all of a sudden about a year ago they started throwing on Haji, so. Now he has a, a pile of nicknames going for himself, and, and he's just a great guy to have around, and he's, uh, he's a good teammate for everybody. He's a kid who does really good in school. Zero, zero discipline uh, problem. Yeah. High character kid. You can tell he comes from a great family. No he's, maintenance. Yeah, d- d- low <laughs> maintenance, very low maintenance, and, uh, and I know he wants to go to college, and I know he's considered maybe the, arm, arm, you know, the Army Air Force, uh, something along that lines, but... He is uh, somebody that's uh, going to do really well for himself, and I'm really glad he's on our football team. And uh, 
you know, uh, Hodges, he's just a wonderful kid, really good, great guy. Uh, we always we always like to bring up the, the food habits. What, what does he have going on over there? He says his th- uh, favorite food is low country boil, and I don't know much about low country boil. Oh, it's but good. To me, uh, to me, it would seem like it would take a long time to cook, so I don't know if he gets that very often. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know that he, you know, his favorite TV show is uh, SpongeBob, so he must be on the Cartoon Network quite a bit. So, But anyway, he's a great kid. And living in St. George, of course, he lo- One loves, of the St. George guys. Uh, loves to hunt and loves to fish and all that good stuff down there. So uh, all those St. George kids we get, all of them have been fantastic. I haven't had a St. George kid just we haven't loved up here. I mean, so again, another one of those St. George guys. Really proud of you. All right. Well, congratulations, Haji. Haji, congratulations. And uh, you're one of our two senior spotlights this week. I'm going to pause for about three seconds. All right. Number 66, Trent Mahoney. You know, Trent is, uh, and again, he went first two years being called Kenneth, that's uh, being his dad's name, and then, of course, Trent don't have much to say at all. He's a quiet, quiet mm-hmm. guy, very quiet. I'm not even sure what his voice sounds like. But, uh, you know, Trent, you know, all of a sudden, you would see him right, kept writing down Trent instead of Kenneth, and I said, let's talk about this. Are you Trent or are you Kenneth? He goes, my dad's Kenneth. I want to be Trent. So, so anyway, I guess he changed his own name halfway through his high school career. But you know, he, start, he started a lot of the season last year at uh, offensive line, and, and then this year he's been our starting left tackle the entire season. Uh, he's a kid that he's easy to coach. Coach Murray's coached him for the last four years, yeah. and uh, Coach Murray coaches all of his offensive linemen hard. And I know that uh, he coaches Trent really hard. And, you know, Trent's yeah. a you know he's a six foot four. 280 pound kid and uh, young man and he does a really great job in the weight room and I know his goal is to go to college one day and there's a chance that Trent may get a chance to go to a small college mm-hmm. to play some offensive line just because of his body size but again he is uh, um, his brother's younger brother plays for us and he's six foot five but doesn't nearly weigh as much as Trent does so hopefully he'll get to get to the dinner table like Trent has been and so uh, Reese can Reese can step in maybe after uh, Trent leaves this year, but you know Trent is a is, is a wonderful kid, great in the classroom, does a great job in the classroom. Again, one of those kids we talk about that's low maintenance, really no maintenance at all, because he's he's there at every workout, he does everything he needs to do, everything he's supposed to do. He's a great teammate, and really proud of the last four years uh, for Trent because he's been a program kid yeah. all the way through. Has made all the workouts, all the practices. Uh, he's a guy that, uh, and I'd go. I don't think I'm going much out there when I say I know he's a guy that's never missed a practice, yeah. never been hurt to any point where he's had to miss any time. So he's just been a, a fantastic, fantastic guy, and uh, you know, and he's a he's a sausage and gravy kind of guy, as it says here on his <laughs> on his bio of his favorite food. And and uh, you look at him, he's 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 been able to get his hands on some. So. Oh yeah, uh, being a big guy <laughs> like that, and, and uh, but again, great guy. Just uh, a lot of our seniors are just really wonderful kids, good people. And uh, Trent, we're lucky to have him. We're lucky he stuck with it because as a freshman, a lot of these guys as freshmen they show up, and being freshmen like they are, they are a long way from that starting lineup. Oh, yeah. and, and they may look and say, "I'm never going to get to that point where I'm going to be a starter," but they all do. I yeah. mean, if they stay, they play. If they stay in the program and, and follow the program and the weight room, the con- conditioning and everything we do, they get to that point where they're able right. to step out there and they're going to play. And, and, and Trent's a great proof of that. The weight room's done him a great job. The strength program, the conditioning program has done him really wonders. And, and, and again, he's a guy that comes out for track, gets out there and really works at it and yeah. does a good job throwing the shot in the disc. And he's also a guy that's uh, able to increase a little bit of his speed through track and, and being a big uh, big part of our football team. And, again, for Haji and for Trent, you know, uh, uh, really proud of those guys. No doubt about it. You, you might want to think about a new award, a low-maintenance award. That's right. The, the guy that's the lowest maintenance on the team, that would be uh, – <laughs> That would be a good. That'd be a good award. Actually, that really would be. And, uh, and some of the kids would automatically know they're not getting it. So, <laughs> and some of these guys would know. I have a chance. High for this. maintenance yeah. If I just don't talk to coach, maybe I'll get it. I don't know. But no, some of these guys are just really, really great kids. And you know, and it comes down to, it comes down to the parents a lot of oh, yeah. times. And that's the thing I tell parents. Uh, your, your child is just really a reflection of, of who you are, mm-hmm. and so often and. 
and uh, for for Hodges and Trent, you know, they they come from good people, and that's why they're good people. All right. Well, we'll leave we'll leave it on that, and uh, congratulations to Trent Mahoney, number sixty six, and Hodges Hunter, number sixty three. And we'll be right back to discuss Lincoln County. Okie Finoki Rural Electric Membership Corporation offers more than dependable electrical energy at a competitive price. Quality service is provided by a friendly and professional staff trained to meet your every electrical power need, whether residential, commercial, or industrial. If you have any questions or need information, call us at 1-800-262-5131. Okie Finoki REMC, owned by those we serve. A proud sponsor of this year's Indian Football Broadcast. All right, welcome back to the Coach Mac Show, our final segment, our playoff segment with the uh, Lincoln County Red Devils, Coach. We were just discussing off camera a little bit of history there, some pre-McWhorter history, and then and then in your era. Yeah, and we've uh, I think we've played uh, overall seven times, I guess, in Charlton County football history. Uh -huh. The first time back in 1974, uh, Charlton County played them in the quarterfinals, and uh, and then back in '75. And lost to them, but lost to them three years in a row in, oh. in 74, 75, and 76. And then I think the next time we played them, uh, then I think in 1990, my first year as head coach here, yeah. we played them in the state championship game and lost six to nothing to them. Oh, man. And, and then we went uh, right back the following year and played them in the quarters, lost to them uh, then in the quarters, uh, but then went back. The following year in nine in ninety two in nineteen ninety two so we played them we played them three years in a row back in seventy four and then we played them three years in a row back in ninety lost to them in the state championship game ninety one lost to them in the quarters and then nineteen ninety two we beat them fourteen to six at Lincoln County mm -hmm. in the quarterfinals uh, and then we finally played them again uh, the last time we played them we'd been in uh, nineteen ninety nine. We beat them in the state championship game at Lincoln County, 20 to nothing, and that was the last time we we played them. And uh, of course, after that, we got moved into Double A. Right. Stayed in Double A for 10 years, and then uh, we've been back in uh, been back here in uh, Single A. Went back to Single A. I think it was back in in 2000, 2001, oh, yeah. 2011. Went back to Single A, where we, yeah. then we have a chance to play them. And, of course, uh, since then, here we are in 2014, getting ready to play them again at our place. And, uh, you know, so it's uh, – people talk about, you know, they've won, I believe, 14 state titles over their history. And, yeah. you know, we've won, we've won four, played, for, played for, for eight of them in our history. And uh, so people talk about Lincoln Charlton. You know, the two kind of go together a little bit in recent Some history. history. Um, and so I think it's going to be a great matchup. It's one that I'm excited about. I personally am really excited about playing them. Uh, coach Larry Campbell's no longer their head coach. He was their head coach for, I think, I believe about 123 years there. <laughs> and uh, now uh, Coach Banks has taken over and has done a great job in the transition of taking them over. And I'm just real excited about the matchup. Uh, Charlton County and Lincoln County, I think it's going to be great. Uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere. You know, Camden counties they are done with football right now. Mm -hmm. A few other counties around us with, uh, you know, Brantley County's finished with football. Nassau County down in Florida, just south of us, they're finished in football. So I'm hoping we're going to get a big crowd big just big from crowd. the area just because of the, the name recognition of uh, yeah. Charlton Lincoln. And I think it's going to be a great atmosphere and it's going to be a great night. I know it's going to be uh, perfect football weather. Oh, it's going to be, it's going to be you know, probably in the 50s, uh, no chance of no rain. It's going to be just absolutely perfect. And I'm excited that we don't have to make that five-plus-hour trip to Lincolnton, and they get to make that trip down here to Folkestone. Yeah. But it's going to be a it's going to be a great evening, great night for first round of the Class A state playoffs. And I, I'm excited for it. I, I hope our kids start feeling the the our, the energy of the coaches because uh, the, it's going to be a it's going to be a great matchup, and it's going to be one of those things where it's going to be a little bit of a throwback. Though people that have been following Charlton County yeah. football for a long time. Definitely know the history, you know, behind uh, Charlton and Lincoln. Yeah, there's a lot of history, and, and they've all been big games. Oh, the, the, every time that Charlton and Lincoln's played, it's been for something. It's been yeah. to, to advance. It's always been no earlier than the quarterfinals. 
Uh, and so it's been it's been some huge games and some some you know back in the 70s I think we're looking at it here you know the games Charlton lost was 28 to seven and 13 to nothing and then 36 to nothing that was a blowout but the other the other two was some competitive games and of yeah. course in 90 six nothing right here was an incredible oh, man. incredible football game and again that my first year as head football coach and not really knowing what I'm doing next thing you know I'm standing there you know. Is playing, we're playing for a state championship game against Lincoln, which is uh, and right here in Folks, and that was exciting. So all the other games, other than the, the 90 game, all the other games we've played have all been in Lincoln Tight. since I've been here, have been up in Lincoln. So it's going to be great to have them make the trip down here, and, uh, and I know they're going to bring a, a fantastic football team. I know they're going to bring a great crowd because their their people are football people like ours. They're going yeah. to travel. They're going to travel with their football team and, and cheer them on and that sort of thing. I think we're going to have a lot of community people from around here, Camden County, Nassau County, Brantley County, people that's going to want to come see this game because yeah. I think it's going to be one of those good 48-minute hard-fought games. Battle. I think yeah. it really will be. Well, let's get into them a little bit, Coach. They're 7-3 uh, they're and three overall. They were in the uh, same region as Aquinas, who went 11-0. and 11 and 0. They, uh, they're four and one in their region, and their only loss coming, obviously, to Aquinas. I hope I'm saying that Aquinas. right. Aquinas. 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 And uh, three and two at home, and they're actually a pretty good road team. Four and one on the road. Yep, they are, which shows that they're disciplined when they go on the road and they do real well. We're looking at the film today with our players of them and Aquinas. Aquinas is a great football team, maybe the overall best Class A football team uh, in the state. Um, you know, not taking anything away from Marion or, or, or Irwin County, those guys, but, but Aquinas is uh, just a fantastic football program, a great team, and that game went all the way down to the very end. Yeah. I believe it was a couple point or a touchdown type football game at, with Lincoln with a chance to win it. So that tells you how good Lincoln is. Lincoln yeah. can play with the very best teams in our classification and have a chance to play them. Offensively, they got a great athletic quarterback who does a lot of things. They base out of the wing tee, and, and they do a good job with it. Their offensive line is solid. They have a guard number 70 who I think is going to be one of the best offensive linemen we've seen. But the whole five up front are really outstanding. It reminds me of Irwin County, really? their offense, the way they can run it, the way they can move people on the offensive front. They've got a handful of running backs that do a great job. Uh, all of them can get the ball and turn the corner on you. And then you've got a tight end who's six foot four, two hundred pounds, who also goes and plays inside linebacker number fourteen, who's going to be one of the best football players we played against. Their really? secondary solid. They're, they have two big, big, strong defensive tackles put in the middle. The number forty, and number seven at defensive ends, who, who do a great job. Who play with great technique. It's a very well coached uh, football team. Uh, offensively, again, we're expect the wing tee. We know they run, they throw the waggle pass very, very well. Really? And, uh, and other passes out of the wing tee. They run the, uh, the, you know, they run the counter play, uh, very well. They run the fullback trap, the belly. And of course, the quarterback has the ability to just take the ball himself and take it down the field at any time. He's going to be a great athlete, one of the best athletes we have faced. It's extremely well coached uh, on offense. Defensively, they base out of the 4-3 look. Um, but we, of course, all year long, we prepare for what we've seen on film, but yet we also prepare for what we haven't seen. Right. We're prepared for the 4-3, the 4-2, four four uh, but also we're prepared for 7-8 uh, to eight in the box at times, cover zero. And which is, we've seen a lot of cover zero this year, so we've really worked hard on things to do versus the cover zero, versus the... Uh, you know, even the odd front, which we haven't seen a lot of that from them. But, mm -hmm. again, we're, we're prepared for any kind of defensive look we see. But, again, they're extremely well coached. The kicking game, they have, a, uh, they have an extra point kicker that reminds me a lot of uh, uh, Tomcat. And he, uh, you know, just is automatic from extra point distance. Really? He's kicked some really great field goals. But he's a very, very good kicker. Their special teams looks like just they're extremely well coached, disciplined. Kickoff, kickoff return, punt team. Punt return, uh, uh, extra point and field goal, just uh, just flawless, really. So it's going to be a, a football team that's going to be as well coached as any we've seen this year. And I, I look for this to be a, a great football game, a great test. You know, in the playoffs, it's really strange when I say this, and I, I don't really understand it so much myself, but but actually in the playoffs I tend to, tend, we almost tend to, uh, 
we look forward to it. We've been in them now for over 22 straight years, I think. It's, it's almost like we look forward to the playoffs, and once they're here, we have the ability to seem to turn it up and play a little better than we have throughout the regular season. I'm really hoping that's the case, yeah. and we're going to need to because, uh, you know, Coach Banks is going to bring it down a great football team from Lincoln County, very disciplined, 4-1 and one on the road, and they've played some really tough people up there, Washington yeah. Wilkes, and then you look at their region, most of the region is, is private schools, mm-hmm. and we know how well the private schools have been playing oh, the yeah. last couple of years, and for them to to be do as well as they have in that region says a lot about them. And of course, we're uh, we're going to have to we're going to have to really make sure we're playing the top of our game and not make any mistakes to have a chance to play with these guys. And they they can put points on the board. They're averaging 23 points a game. Well, again, that's that's in a tough region. They, yeah. Their offense gets up and down the field. We watched some film today and. We've seen them go all the way down the field for 99 yards one time, uh, right. just using different, really using their entire playbook. You can see everything they're doing on that drive, and they do it really well. Again, they're, they're a bunch of smart kids, very disciplined. Coach Banks has done a really great job as discipline and discipline with them, and and they execute so well. Mm-hmm. A typical, you know, typical North Georgia football team in, in the aspect that they they are coached well, they're smart. And they execute almost flawlessly. So you're going to see a team that's going to get off the bus here and ready to play football. And and if we make mistakes, if we're sloppy, if we're not taking care of the football, it can go the other way in a hurry. So hopefully our kids, uh, we get in the right frame of mind uh, soon. Today was really a pretty good day, Monday. Uh, I know the weather's going to change a great deal. Next oh, yeah. couple of days, we're going to get in some uh, very cold temperatures and football weather. To, yeah, to be honest with you, our kids uh, down here in Southeast Georgia struggle with the cold. It seems like it's been that way over the years. When the weather reaches a certain point, 50 or below, it's it's hard for our kids to to operate in, I guess. But if it's a hundred out, our kids have no problem with it. It seems like, but. But again, uh, I, I think Friday night's going to be perfect weather for us. It's going to be perfect weather for the fans. It's going to be a, a great, clear night. So hopefully we'll have a big crowd here regardless for a good oh, yeah. football game. And if it's a game that we come up short in, it ain't going to be like we're playing a team that's not any good. This is a very good football team. Yourself. This team is more than good enough to beat us, more than good enough to beat us. And uh, But I think if we play well, it's going to be a great hard foot football game uh, all the way to the very end. Kick off 730. 7.30. 7.30. 7.30 right here. So we need to get everybody here early from Nassau County, from Hilliard. Uh, Hilliard made the playoffs. They're, they're out of it. Callahan, Camden, y'all come over. And well, I think it's going to be a, it's a great matchup. Charles oh, yeah. and Lincoln. I mean, if you know anything about high school football, it's, it's one of those classic matchups. So hopefully we get a lot of folks here. You know, you know where County's probably going to blow out their opponent as, as they have been all year long. So uh, even you guys, come on down for come a football down, game. Cause I know ball, this man. one, this one here won't be a blowout. This one's going to be all the way down to the end. And it might be one of those that who's, uh, who's making the plays at the very end is going to be the team that has a chance to win. All right, coach. Well, we'll see you Friday night, 730. Well, we'll, we'll see you a little earlier than that, but the fans, y'all get there. We're carrying the game live, charlottesportsnet.com, and on the Facebook page we'll have the link up on the NFHS network. And uh, so we're carrying that live as well. And we'll see you Friday night. Good luck, Coach. That would be great. Thank you.